Hey, Teeter! You're with the herd tonight. Colby, you stay with her, too. Do you think Colby and Teeter? Keeter? Or Tolby? Keeter? Or Tolby? Oh, sorry, I thought there was a question. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know if you guys heard that was me. it. Uh-oh. Who enters? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Going on? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's so good. Every girl that I know in Hollywood read for this role. Every girl that I know. And everyone wants to know your story. Because you're the big winner. How you mean how did I do it? Yeah. Yeah, how did you do it? I think I I think I am teeter. No. down. I think so. I think I'm a feral, it <laughs> kicking little weirdo. She's a hand. I really do. But how I did is they called me in. And uh, I was super nervous. I didn't think I was going to get it at all. And I thought I tanked the audition. You saw it. I, appara I did not, apparently. But I thought I tanked it so hard, I kept having the casting associate read the scene again. I'm like, just like, do it again. Which is also a big audition no-no for any actors who are watching. <laughs> Don't ask them to read it again. And then I was so mad that I had messed it up that I sort of checked out of my body. And on the way out, you know, they're like, goodbye, thank you very much. I somehow was back home with my family and I said, goodbye, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out and I called my manager. I'm like, I'm quitting. I was like, I told the casting associate I loved her. I was like, I tanked. I was like, I gotta become like a hooker or a writer after this man. I did no more acting. There's about four or to six different personalities living in there. Accents, you are a chameleon, you are like brilliant actor. Uh, I always get on you about your English. Well, that's because there's really only one accent for you. And as I said, like any English person who's in here, and it's a bit harder with the gum, isn't it? I just love it. I know, but it makes you get all jiggly inside, doesn't it? It does. I know. It does. I feel real feelings of This is what we get love. all the time. This is what makes Jen so amazing. That's so like, nice. No, it's It's just... what makes you guys love me and what made my mom send me to camp every <laughs> summer. <laughs> She's like, get her the <laughs> out of the right house. Too. You look like a buck mother <laughs> chicken. I think I, initially that all of your character is, is identified as I read it through the dialogue and specifically the way that the words are written mm -hmm. in that you get how this person talks. So right. and then we're going to try to read some and see if we even know what the hell they say. I don't know. I always almost knew what she was saying all the time. Watch this prove to be wrong and I'm just full of shit. But I really felt like I understood what she was saying. When you said it, we I thought we did. Reading it is different for us who don't live in the character. For instance, just at first glance, it looks like it's written in German. I will tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Want a back room? Want to give Is me Is it R-E-W-B? E-W-B. Uh, E-W-B. B-E-K-K-R-E-W-B. R-E-W-B, -E -E that's what I thought. You want back room? Don't, thanks. You want to give me in? Let's just, like, take a moment. That's creating Taylor. a character, no. Yeah, people, I, they were like, how did you come up with the way she spoke? And I was like, I, I basically just read exactly <laughs> what, he wrote. what he wrote. What's your name? Tyre. Is it, so. is it Teeter or Tyter? It's how do you say it? Teeter. What's that? Wait. One more time. <laughs> Teeter. 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 Your name Peter? Peter. 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 What's that? Like you got to keep the the tongue forward on the teeth. Peter. This is gibberish. What do you have? They're all deeply foul. Everything. Do I look like my fucking name is Peter? You skunk-haired mother. Do I look like my name is Peter? You skunk-haired mother. She just called me a mother. That's pretty good. Skunk haired? Yeah. That's because he this color is hair. Understood that, didn't you, you bow legged bastard? I love that line. You understood that, didn't you, you bow legged bastard? Um, thank you yeah. for coming and just being Spending awesome. Spending your time with us. I missed you guys. You know you're smarter than you look. Not saying much, but you are. Well, you're as smart as you look. I'm not saying he...
What do you guys think about the uh, progression, the relationship between Beth and, and Rip? We've been waiting for it. It's been a long game. I, I stand Beth and Rip. Hashtag Beth. Hashtag Riff. Those are primo hashtags. <laughs> They're my OTP. Um, huge fan of Beth and Rip. It's an amazing opportunity to see a softer side of both of them because they're both hard is in such a different way. Like Rip will throw you off the, the tallest building in Montana. Right. It's like four stories. Right. You might survive. <laughs> um, in the first season, the first time we see them sort of as a couple is hard and is angry and it's clear that they are both like sort of, they, they both bring so much anger to that equation. You ruin it every time. And then by the third season, that, that relationship has progressed, I think, more than any other relationship on the show. Like, we're in real time watching them sort of connect in a deeper way and watching them let their barriers down. Yeah. You can hold her damn hand, Rip. Thank you, Daddy. If you were to date from the outside a person like Rip and what he does, there's no way for you to ever be able to understand what he does. You want to fight somebody, you come fight me. I'll fight you all goddamn day! And the same with Beth, because of the extremes that she goes through. I ruin careers for a living. So there's always a part of them that would always have to be, sh like, cut off from the person that they would be with. Them together, they don't have to worry about that. You can do whatever we want. Baby, you've been doing whatever you want your whole damn life. I think it's really beautiful. I think the audience is going to have this opportunity to see this amazing side of Rip and the cooking and the attentiveness. He does have this capacity to, like, love deeply. First, we're going to dance. Most shows would try to put that entire cycle in, into one season very easily, and it's kind of cheap. We've lengthened it through three, and it opens up so much more time for all that complexity to come through. And to take that much time is a risk, you yeah. know? But yeah. when it works, it is everything. It's I, truly the most interesting relationship, I think, on the show. Well, well past playing hard to get, don't you think, Beth? You and me, we're never past playing hard to get, baby. I'm gonna take this outfit to town. We're, uh, we're gonna go watch Jimmy Rodeo, OK? I think for the first time in his life, Jimmy feels like a part of something. He, he feels like a family. Yeah. The end of season two, Jimmy's family really shows up for him. How much does it cost to enter? A couple hundred. But you win a few grand. I don't have a couple hundred to spare. I'll spot you. They help him sort of deal with his past life. They help him sort of close that chapter. I'm going to show you how to get rid of problems so they don't become new problems. You hear me? In season three, Jimmy finally starts to feel at home and finally starts to feel like a part of a community. That's right. Not a thing. And then also finally starts to find some personal sense of identity in rodeoing. No shit. Where did that come about? Because it, was, it seemed like something that Jimmy did not want to get on a horse at all season one, looked terrified every time he was on a horse. I don't know nothing about horses. Now you're getting a crash course, Jimmy. Should I pet him? Like, it originally started, if I remember correctly, because you wanted money. You needed money. Yeah, it was like born a necessity. So then, like, what was that change? Like, yeah. where did that come from? He needed to, mm -hmm. to pay his debts. And then it was the first time in his life that anyone ever told him he was good at something mm -hmm. or celebrated him. Right. So I think he started to feel really proud of that and to sort of derive a sense of identity from that. And then by the time we find him in season three, he's continued on that path. Yeah. And he's sort of coming into himself more and more. Finally got enough to get my pro card, so tonight's the first rodeo that counts towards my standings. And then in season three, when he goes to the rodeo and his whole family shows up, basically, yeah. everyone comes to watch him rodeo. I think that's a really beautiful moment for Jimmy. Yeah, you, you, I'm sorry, you weren't, you weren't there that day. You had to stay with Peter. We're going to go get cleaned up, go into town. You have a great night, buddy. Yeah. I, was, I know, because you just said everybody. I just want to clarify that yeah. not, it wasn't actually everybody. I mean, I was, I was so, willing to let it go, because I was like, oh, wow, no one's going to say anything. I just I think accuracy awesome is important. Yeah. I want both of you just to drop dead right in front of me right now. That would be a dream. The audience super cares about context. Words matter. Yeah. True, words do matter. The sun was setting, Eden was riding around in the thing with the flag, and our boy, our little, our little Jimmy. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. Sorry. I just, I mean, they're in spirit. And now you have this love interest. Good luck. 
Yeah, yeah, it's wild. It's like John Dutton came to watch Jimmy Rodeo and he forgets all about it as soon as Mia shows up. You ever have a girl look at you and your whole world just stops? Every Saturday night, now come on, focus. That Mia in a lot of ways represents this entire other way of life. This is something that's like totally new to Jimmy and right. it's so exciting for Jimmy to see this whole other world of possibility. Mm. It, it's like an incredible gift to have Mia played by Eden Brolin because she she's an incredibly like gifted and, and talented and generous actor, but she's also like has such a strong sense of personal identity outside of this show. Like she's so fully herself. Can't believe I kissed you. <laughs> Not that forward. <laughs> And that makes Mia so fully herself and so fully independent of the ranch lifestyle right. and of the Duttons. And yeah, Jimmy sort of falls so head over heels for Mia that he then, of course, is uh, devastatingly injured mm -hmm. as a result of it. No, 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 no! His life is suddenly in, in real jeopardy in a, yeah, in a really significant way. Yeah, you can't heal properly, you have no use to be on the ranch, yeah. and then there goes your family. And Dutton says identity. that line exactly. If you break an arm chasing buckles, it's hard to... It's hard to stay on any man's payroll. No Play use. at your own risk. Yeah. No use. Huh. So he, Jamie immediately puts his family and that whole lifestyle at risk for Mia. You gonna say nothing? Yeah, I didn't really plan this out past walking up here.